Robert Ripp from Massapequa. Okay, Rob. Um, I guess uh, just before I begin, I, I, I just want to ask a question in relation to the statement you provided earlier in uh, regards to uh, the SRB uh, concessions. I'd like to know um, if you could tell me if if there are no longer any SINGs involved in, in or have any, if there are no if, if there is no SING interest in the SRB con, uh, corporation, that's what I'm assuming is happening. Would you be able to tell us who the new or did Mr. Chopper purchase everything, or did you tell us who the new people are? You know, I'm really reluctant to go past the statement. By the way, I'm not trying to be funny when I say this. When I when you say there were no sings involved, and sings a very common name. Correct. Okay. I, I just I'm not trying to be cute, but uh, but the statement I, I think said very clearly that uh, the sing we're referring to is Harendra Singh, the prior well, shouldn't say yeah, well the prior concessionaire and members of his family, just to be clear for the record. I don't know that uh, those names are being vetted as we speak, and I'm looking for a little help here. Uh, probably not a good idea to give the names out, but we're expecting the results, I think, very shortly, uh, at which case, at which time they will reveal all the names. We're certainly not going to keep the names uh, under wraps before we go into, uh, uh, before we pass on uh, the proposal. Okay, I just have um, one last question on that. Um, if, we, if we have a new, uh, a new entity which is proposing uh, continuing on with the concessions, why are we giving them like first crack at it? Why aren't we just doing an RFB and, and, and taking bids from more than one right now? I think the, the uh, we're not giving them a first crack. I think they've came, they have demonstrated during the period of time they were there. Um, I think I said it in the statement, they did a good job. And they have come forward with a proposal which uh, I think at an absolute minimum bears looking at. I don't know if you want to go through the five steps, I'll go through them for you again. But um, they are very, very attractive. Uh, whether or not they pan out, whether or not ultimately the board thinks they're all that attractive, uh, we'll decide. But we do have the legal authority to you know, handle it this way. Okay, Th thanks. But keep in mind, keep in mind, I just want to be clear about this. All the statement talks about is that the town has agreed to look at their proposal and consider it. Uh, I, I would, uh, by no stretch of the imagination, would I rule out that ultimately we might appoint an emergency uh, concessionaire and proceed with RFPs. That is very much alive and in the offing as well. So, but I, I think, in light of all of the turmoil and chaos, uh, it certainly seems like an intelligent thing to do to at least review that proposal and see whether or not they can really deliver on those uh, five points. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, before I begin, I, I also would like to express my gratitude and my thanks to Mr. McNeil and Mr. Pinto. Uh, I understand the fortitude that it took for you to express your position. Um, you mentioned a little bit earlier about the, the hubbubaloo, you called it. And I just want to just touch briefly on this also. Um, you know, the residents in Oyster Bay, they, they you know, you, you only have so, so many uh, forums to, to gain lack of a better word, let's call them intelligence, what's happening in the community. And, you know, recently you've been pretty close-mouthed, or close-mouthed, I guess you might be, with your, with your comments to the press. And I think the perception a lot of people got was that it literally took, you know, a letter from the district attorney to you for the town to make an announcement on what was going on with Mr. Ibrido. And, and that's, you know, that's really all I have to say on that, but... Well, but hold on, hold on. What you have to say is not accurate. That's not what happened. First of all, any reporter who calls me uh, gets a return call, there, uh, with an exception. And that exception is, I'm not going to get into here. Um, so I spend quite a bit of time talking to reporters all day long. Um, as far as what happened uh, in, in the case of the letter from the district attorney, the district attorney was doing her job. She wrote a letter. I have no qualms with that. She wrote a letter to us saying, are you aware that upon Mr. Ippolito's and Commissioner Ippolito's plea uh, that uh, his office is vacated at that moment in time? And we wrote back that, yes, we were. 
we, we were aware of it, and it was all discussed. But I think the, the problem I have is this, um, I don't know how to characterize it, but like every five minutes you get a call, somebody thinks they saw Mr. Abelito, or they think they saw his shadow in the hallway, or why didn't you change this immediately? I, you know, this is a very significant development uh, in the evolution of, uh, and, and in the operation, I should say, of the Department of Planning and Development, I think. I think it was Councilwoman Alessia who said a little bit earlier, uh, this is a very, very significant change. Um, the plea was entered on Tuesday. Uh, the office was vacated on Tuesday. Uh, Mr. Ippolito gets paid only until uh, Tuesday. And under the appropriate, the prevailing provisions of the public offices law, that's it. There, no other action had to be taken. So I'm, I'm not really sure what uh, I'm not really sure what all of the concern was afterwards. That's where I'm not clear. That, that's what I'm trying to explain to you. At least in my opinion. But well, what was the concern? At least in my opinion, um, I can't speak for all residents. My opinion was that it appeared that you didn't release that information until until recently, until today, and and what what I saw as just as just an individual was that the town through their spokespeople weren't making any statements except for you were wait, allegedly waiting to review court documents. And the impression that I got, and maybe other people got this too, was that the town never came out and said, hey, this is, uh, there, there were two members, excuse me, there were two board members that did, but everybody else was mute, or moot, mute. And then uh, the impression I got was that, I mean, we didn't hear the town's position until after the district attorney uh, addressed it by writing that letter. Well, I think so. I, I, maybe we have a different view of things. I thought the two town board members, Joe and Tony, I thought they said that, in their opinion, uh, the commissioner should be terminated. He had been already. There, there was, I think, I think the impression was created in the public, not through the board members, by the way. I think the impression was created in the public that the town had to do some affirmative act to terminate and perhaps wait till the next town board meeting and, and have a vote and so on and so forth. That wasn't the case. The, the prevailing law says that at the time he entered the plea, the office is vacant. That's really, really the end of the story. Now, in fairness to, to uh, uh, Commissioner Polito and in fairness to the town and its residents, I think you have to, the plea was entered, no one was aware the plea was going to be entered that morning. You know, out of the blue comes word that a plea was entered. Now we have to review that and find out what is the impact of that plea. Does it fall within the ambit of the public officer's law? And indeed it did. And in fact, we confirmed that. There was no action to be taken by the town board. It would, I'd see, well, I would agree with you if we didn't have public officer's law. And somebody said, hey, your commissioner has pled guilty to a felony. What are you going to do about it? And then if we sat there and said, gee, I, I don't know what we're going to do about it. Uh, um, or some people said, hey, we're going to terminate him immediately. Yeah, but that wasn't the case. The case was, at the time the commissioner entered the plea, it was over. There was nothing to do. So, I don't know, maybe we're looking at it differently, but okay. I'm pretty comfortable with the way I see it. I'm looking at the lawyer, Frank, you want to answer one? Uh, the, <coughs> the letter that we received from, from, uh, from Ms. Singh is basically said, please confirm. Mm -hmm. And we called and we confirmed. Oh, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm not yeah, just... I, I don't, I, I, the supervisor mentioned, I, I don't, I'm trying to understand you know, you know what you're trying to say, but she wrote to us, please confirm. We picked up the phone, office is vacated by New York State law. Uh, I'm and not, then we wrote to her. That's it. I, That's think, we can, I think we confirmed it right yeah, well. yeah, yeah, I'm, not dispu I'm not disputing that, that anyone in the town didn't act accordingly do what they're supposed to do. You just mentioned, I don't get why everybody, why there's a hubbub. And I'm just telling you my, like the opinion that I got when I read it was no. that there wasn't a decision made until after the That's all I'm saying. That's no. just my one man's opinion. That's yeah. it. So, yeah. and, I, and all I'm doing is sharing my opinion with you. Listen, I didn't do, I, look, um, let, let's not, let's be careful with each other. I understand the consternation that ensues after you hear a guilty plea to a federal felony taken by a commissioner. I get it. I mean, I'm, you know, but all I'm saying is that we have a responsibility, we don't just shoot from the hip and guess at what we're supposed to do or, hey, let's all, let's call a, a meeting in the town board right now and, and you know, terminate them. We, we need to find out 
what the law says. And in this case, the law said, the moment you took the plea, the office is vacated. And that's exactly the position that we took. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, just to get into, uh, <clears throat> before I begin with uh, asking you if you want to answer some of the questions I had last week, I, I just want to bring to your attention that, you, you know, the town has res responded to the two FOIL requests that I had the court order you know, <coughs> entitling me to see. But it's been, it's been more than a month, and I have 20 other, approximately 20 other, I mean, Mr. Spellico knows I have about 20 other FOIL requests, and um, I don't understand, it's, it, quite frankly, it, it's not at my doing that they've been backed up like this, they weren't answered, they weren't answered, or even responded to half of them at all. So I, I just want to remind you that, you know, I'm hoping that you're going to get that stuff together for me, I'm not going to have to continue in court about this. Okay. You want to talk about the question from the last uh, five yeah, yeah, I just wanted to bring to your attention that um, on the town's website, this is the second meeting that, that I, and I believe you haven't posted the, the actual resolutions like you did. <coughs> you have the list of the resolutions and you started posting them. And then I also just want to touch on... Uh, Wait, we didn't do it? No, this, this week? No, oh, I checked yesterday. I didn't see it. In between, right? Their up is proposed, and then they have to be taken down yeah. and put back up. Well, um, the whole thing like this. You, you did it. You did it two meetings ago. You showed everything. They were up by noon yesterday. They, well, they were, I'm sorry. I apologize. That my my mistake. Well, that's okay, I, I, I take back. Um, but I want to talk about the video and the live streaming. I don't. I don't know. I mean, you know, we have the facilities that. I mean, I do it with a little hand thing. Somebody could be videoing in the back, and it could be streamed on the town's website. I don't, I don't know why we're waiting to do that. I'm happy to address it, if that's okay with you. Sure, I'm happy to address that. We have a committee in place who are looking into the most efficient way to do it, and it is something that we intend to do, I would say, in very short order. There are some questions as to the best equipment to use and the best method to stream. And as you know, when you take video with a camcorder, you can edit it and change how people appear and what they're saying. So sure. we want to make sure that when we live stream, that everything appears exactly as it's said on the record. Yeah, you know, I agree with you 100%. Yes. You have a very valid point. I agree. Nice. Um, what is this shot? I just wanted to inform you that, uh, you know, I stopped up at the town um, receiver taxes and Nassau County assessment, and I was speaking in the past about the cleanups, the property cleanups, and it really looks as if, I mean, the ballpark figure is like three quarters of a million dollars, and it, it looks as if, Town is doing the cleanups and assessing it, and that's it. Nobody's keeping track, record of anything. Nobody has any record of any money that we're making. This, this is the answers I got from the assessor. Oh, well, everybody slow down, calm down. Mm -hmm. I thought I addressed this at the last meeting. I thought Mr. Stefanich gave an answer. The controller is in the office. Bob, did you want to? I thought I saw your hand go up. Did I? <laughs> anything that gets put on the tax rolls gets paid by Nassau County, and Nassau County goes back after after the homeowners, again, if it's put on the tax rolls, we get the money. Yeah. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not disputing that one day we're going to get the money. No, no, no I think sorry. We get the money the following February of when we put it on the tax rolls. Done. Thank we get you. the money, and then whatever the public, who, the property owner, whatever deal they have in Nassau County to pay them, three years, five years, thank you, thank you, right? thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, very, the whole but the key is, the key is everybody must remain calm. Okay. You see how it works? Okay. Go ahead, Robert. Thank you. I just want to bring up one one point from last week. Um, I had asked a question, and the response I got was operation of law. And I, you don't like why? Why don't you like that expression? I didn't say I didn't like it. Oh, I thought you didn't. I, like I said the reason. That I, I said I asked the question. Oh, okay. I was asking questions in regard to Ms. Swanson's garage, and you were explaining that by operational law. And I'm not, a, you know, I'm not an attorney, so at that point, I just had to write it down and go home and look it up. Okay, operational law. The manner in which an individual acquires certain rights or liabilities through no, through no act or cooperation of his or, own, of his or own, but merely by the application of the established legal rules to the particular transaction. So if what you're basically saying is that if I bought my neighbor's house, I wouldn't have to do anything. It would just automatically, everything would just switch over by, by operation of law to me, right? Oh, mayor, I mean, if you, were, if you were a real estate attorney or, or any attorney, and I came to you and I said, I'm going to buy my neighbor's house, what do I have to do to put everything in my name? Would you tell me, oh, don't worry about operational law? 
No, I don't know. You have to fire. No, 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 slow down. I don't think it's quite that broad. I think the definition you read is a good definition. I think all we were talking about, Hal, did you want to add something? You look like you're boiling over there. <laughs> Because it goes all the way back to my days when I was secretary of the zoning board. Oh. It used to come up all the time in those days. The, the, Rob Rip did an excellent job of quoting the definition of the term you used, but it was applying to no further action was needed to accomplish the, pers the, the purpose. purpose of merging the two lots in common ownership, <coughs> not to imply that he didn't need to obtain and file a deed to get ownership of the land, but once he did that, or any purchaser did that, and filed that deed, by operation of law, from that point forward, the properties were merged for his own. Correct, for his own. We, we also used a similar term earlier, we don't have to revisit all of that. Uh, obviously, there were things that led up to the operation of law making and office making, but from the time that previous action happened, nothing further was needed to accomplish the purpose. Right. Robert, I, I, I wasn't being funny last time when I said it, and I will do, I'll arrange it for you without any cost or expense to you. I, uh, seriously, I will set you up with a prominent real estate attorney who, uh, who has done work in the town, both, and we've ruled both for and against him, and, and sit and talk with him. Maybe, maybe he could explain it better than, we're, we just don't seem to be getting through to you. Well, the thing is, Mr. Supervisor, is I, I spent a couple hours in the Nassau County Tax Assessor's Office <coughs> since last meeting. Uh, and this is the way that they explained it to me. They sold me Miss Swanson's parcel ID cards, right? Let me just step back one second. I did a formal request of Miss Swanson's uh, building file. And I got a couple of documents that were in there. One is dated August 9, 2011. It's headed from Commissioner Frederick Ippolito, Department of Planning and Development, but it's signed by Donna Swanson. And, and this is letters to uh, Patricia Kniff. It says, kindly, pre, uh, kindly provide the undersigned with a compliance letter for the following properties after the proposed lot line change. A certified copy of proposed subdivision survey is attached here too for your convenience. It's got all the appropriate lot lines. Thank you for the attention this matter. Very truly yours, Donna Swanson. And then a month later, September 1st, 2011, I have a letter that's from Commissioner Ippolito to Ms. Swanson. And what this says is, <coughs> The department is in receipt of your request regarding the above section block and lot numbers. Please be advised that the properties are located within an R10 residential zone. The composite survey prepared by John P. Fer Ferrantello, land survey dated July 14, 2011, indicates the transferring of a portion of lots 596 and 571 to lot 578. After reviewing the proposed partitioning survey, it is determined that both lots will conform with the Town of Oyster Bay zoning ordinance. However, the Nassau County Planning Commission should be contacted whenever property lines are altered. Okay, now, I, I took this and I went up to the Nassau County Assessment's Office. What they explained to me is, as far as Nassau County is concerned, these lots are separate. They were never merged, they were never grouped in any way. They also explained to me that the town controls the production of the tax bill. And it doesn't matter how many tax bills she has. You can bill it twice, you can bill it once. The bottom line is, what, that, that these are separate lots. And it's clear, to, at least to me from these letters, that Ms. Swanson knew that she was making a proposition to the town that she was gonna do this construction with the intention of merging these lots legally through the county. And she was advised as such by the commissioner in this letter. I'm just looking at you. And, and it's my opinion that you can, you can tell me to, to the sky turns orange that there's merge for zoning and merge forever. It, you'll never convince me that the lots weren't a non problem. <laughs> but, no, no, that's right. It doesn't, no, you say it doesn't matter what you say, but say it anyway. Th thank you. Thank you. They are merged for zoning purposes, no matter how many tax lots there are. To go to the county and ask them about merger is going to the wrong place. They don't take hold of the The reason that a letter was written to the planning department it, up front. Whenever property is subdivided, or in this case is lot line altered, has to be approved by the Nassau County Planning Commission. The Nassau County Planning Commission, rightly, checks with the local jurisdiction, in this case the town of Oyster Bay, to make sure that in the case of the subdivision, the new lots created, or in the case of an altered lot line, that the resulting lots after the subdivision or lot line change 
leave you with conforming lots. And that's what had to be confronted here. If Ms. Swanson had proposed to buy so much of the neighbor's lot that the result lot that the neighbor was left with would be too small to be a conforming lot, the town would have advised the planning commission of that and they would not have approved the transfer. Okay. All right. Robert, let's move on. Okay, thank you. I went down in National Shores and asked people, okay. I, 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 don't, I don't know why they call it National Shores, but for some reason down in South Massapequa they have a bunch of neighborhoods, built more shores. You, you live in Massapequa. Well, actually, believe it or not, more neighborhoods have uh, nominal designations, but they don't, they tend not to publicize it. No, I don't know. Believe it or not. Not everyone, but... Uh, the name of the subdivision. It? Yeah. The name of the subdivision. Some of them publicize it by signage, others don't. Well, we don't really have any subdivision or anything. We just have like a neighborhood. But yeah, I would, I would <coughs> agree with what you're saying. Yeah. Bar Harbor, Harbor Green. Yeah. So anyway, the gates of North Massapequa. When I moved back back there in '93, um, I found out that I had private sanitation that the town didn't pick up my sanitation, and I didn't really think much of it when I moved in. I called the sanitation company and I signed up, and. Uh, <coughs> Over the years, I, I've had you know problems where where uh, I wasn't uh, satisfied with the service. And what I wanted to do was uh, what I wanted to do. Uh, actually, what I'm saying is, uh, periodically over the last 20 years, I must have called like half a dozen times, and I'd call up the clerk's office and I'd say, "Hey, can you tell me why the town isn't picking up my garbage?" And they they I, they would say, "Oh, you have to talk to." This guy, sanitation, and the bottom line is you, you would get a referral to Winter Brothers, which is the sanitation that is picking up my garbage. Now, I, I just happened to call again. Rob, how long have you been under contract with Winter Brothers? Since 93? I don't know how, I don't know how long I've been under contract with Winter Brothers. Well, so you want a year? No, 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 no. I don't, I don't think Winter Brothers had the whole contract the whole time. No, I think there was somebody in there before them, I'm pretty sure. So were you, were you under contract with a private carter since 1993? Yeah. What do you ask? I'm just curious as to what what's evolved since 1993, what the history has been. Oh well, let me put it this way: you said you've been under contract since 1993 with a private party. Uh, I've periodically uh, canceled my service with private oh. with private party. I, I haven't had consistent service through the whole time. Okay. So what I was saying was. I just recently I called Mr. I called the town clerk's office actually a couple Fridays ago. I actually got to run around one more time. I, I, when I called up, I didn't explain who I was or anything. I just said, "Oh, uh, I'd like to know. You know, can you tell me I live in Massapequa?" And then when I called back, I did mention who I was, and I spoke to Mr. Altadana, and he explained to me that, and this is the first time since I've been living there, explained to me that the reason that there's private sanitation in the community in Nelson Shores is because our HOA. Um, requested it, and uh, right, right, homeowner association. And I explained to Mr. Alpadana that we don't have a homeowner's association, that we have a, a civic association. And I'm actually working in conjunction with the civic association now, and, and by their own admission, out of the 1,530, I think it's 31 or 38 properties that are in the town of Oyster Bay, only about a third actually are dues-paying members and they, they, they get a very small turnout at their, at their, uh, their meetings. But in any case, what Mr. Elton explained to me was, back in 2014, the town, the, the Civic Association came to the town requesting that we have the town services pick up all sanitation in, in, in Oyster Bay. I mean, the town does a great job. It would actually, I think it, it, they, they had, really got excited after the Super Swan standing because the town did a great job down there. And through my conversations with uh, Mr. Los, who was the president of the Civic Association, he explained to me that the last attempt to investigate the feasibility of the town taking over garbage, garbage collection was in April, May of 2014. The projected costs were based on the assessment at that time. The Civic Association requested this information from the town. There were several departments that became involved, including the Office of the Town Attorney, the IT Division, 
and I believe the Finance Department and the Department of Public Works. I do not know exactly which department calculated the formula. We were informed that in order for this to occur, the Civic Association would do, should deliver a petition signed by more than 50%, not of the people, but of the assessed value of the community, of the community to the town board. The Civic Association would be petitioning to expand the Town of Oyster Bay Garbage Collection District to include the area defined as National Shores in the petition. It would not be switching our district to the town, which would lead one to believe that we never were a district. In theory, you needed a majority of the assessed value, not the property of the number of residents. Every property owner was in favor of the town taking over garbage collection, which would, require, which would be required to sign the petition. Now, I started to look at the list that was provided to the Civic Association. And I was paying $35 a month to, to Winter Brothers. I actually, I just recently terminated with them uh, because personal personal reasons. But I was under the impression that everybody in, in, in Nassau Shores was paying $35, but I've been corrected since. But when I calculated the, the tax, or, or the estimated tax collection, for the 1,500 properties, it's over $750,000. So what I don't understand is, I mean, I spoke with Ms. Daltadana, and the Civic Association lost their records in, 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 uh, in Sandy. And he, Ms. did you want to say something? Yeah, I went back to you. Thank you, thank you. And, and um, Ms. Daltadana got them, it's great. But at, up until now, I mean, I'm, I'm led to believe that he got it when I saw the book, but uh, prior till today, we didn't know whether or not we were going to have any documents. But the point is that sometime we decided to remove, I would imagine remove, I'll have to read, I haven't seen it yet, but I, I would imagine that there was an agreement that we would, the National Shores would not be included in, in a garbage district. I mean, I don't have a garbage district bill on my tax bill. I just have a solid waste disposal. Okay? So, I was really dismayed that. Can I just? I'm sorry, sorry. Go ahead. The solid waste disposal tax only covers the recycling and the infrastructure for running the landfill. Period. Right. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thank you very much. So I was a little bit dismayed that here the town has an opportunity. I mean, I don't know how far it went back, but it was brought to their to the town's attention in 214. We have an opportunity to recoup three quarters of a million dollars in, in tax revenue every year if we pick up our own garbage. I mean, we do a better job than anybody else. Two things. I'm sorry. Okay. In 1956, they tried to establish the district. Because you asked me to research this for you. Okay. Okay. They, they tried to establish the district. Back then, it was called the Encore Civic Association. Prior to the establishment of the Nassau Shore Civic Association, which was in 1957. 57? And uh, Mr. James Walsh, they were adamantly against it. They did not want That's okay. public sanitation. I mean, who knows what was going on in 57? But, but this is a history here. What we're trying to do, if you give us the time, because we're now up to 1959, we spent probably 150 hours okay. to try and solve your request and get the information. It's not like anybody here is trying to hide anything. I'm not saying that. You have to. I called the office of the clerk and I got the runaround. Well, I did. That's be excuse me for a second. Let me just let me just let, let me just clarify this. I did get the runaround before I spoke to you, Mr. Altadon. Since since I've been speaking with you, you you have not given me any runaround. But periodically, and I'm, I'm not the first person that even mentioned it at this meeting today. It's it. I have called. I have called to get information, and I've gotten the runaround. And, and, and I appreciate that. But if you don't give me a name of the person you spoke to to give you the runaround, then we cannot address it. Okay. Fair enough. Fair okay, enough. So in the future, if you have an issue with the clerk's office and someone doesn't respond the way you think they should respond, get a name, give the clerk's office a call, and I will discuss it with them. Thank you very much. Okay. There is. There is no. We are here to serve. Uh -huh. Okay, we're here to serve all the residents of Oyster Bay. And if it's not being done properly, we need to know about it by name, and we need to take responsibility for it. You know, I agree with everything that you're saying, and you might, you might not 
maybe you don't remember, but about six months ago, maybe it was eight months ago, I brought to your attention. I actually did a freedom of information request for the procedure that the town has for, a, I'm going to say civilian, a resident, to make a complaint on a town employee. And the response I got back is, you don't have one. And at that point, nobody was interested in setting anything up. But I appreciate your concern now, and in the future, if I do have an issue, I will attempt to get some names and, 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 to, uh, and, and to contact you. I'm um, just getting back to this issue. Hold on. I'm sorry, go ahead. I thought we were hearing. Can you talk about the history here? Yeah, it's still going on with things. Uh, can I say, say something? I don't mean to interrupt, but I'll, I, if you don't mind, I, I, don't have, I, I would prefer to speak to you that, like, for instance, the history of, of, of the designation of this private sanitation thing is irrelevant to the concerns I'm addressing today. At one time or another, was it agreed upon that private sanitation would, would handle it? Obviously so. I'm not disputing that. I don't even think there's a re I'd like to read it later to find out, you know, the history of what happened. But it has nothing to do with the concern well, I'm, I'm raising today. The problem, I think the problem we're having, there are, there are no agreements here. This is not about an agreement. I think this is where we're going wrong, <laughs> and where maybe the history would have helped us. But you don't hear it. Believe me, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll leave it out. I, I, it wouldn't take me, I, I believe Jim, when he said he put in all those man hours or personnel hours, whatever you call it, to, uh, to I, could, I could keep the answer down probably to a minute or so. Because uh, I've, been, I've been the town supervisor for a while. This issue didn't come up for the first time in 2014. Uh, I don't want to say it comes up annually, but um, uh, maybe darn close. It certainly comes up every time you have a change in the leadership in the Civic Association. And every time, uh, John Sicoso, I think, was the, the past president. And so the last time it was brought to my attention was through John, but it has come up many times before, many times before. There's no agreement here. The town doesn't participate in the process at all other than to follow the law. There is, there is a, I can't, I don't memorize the entire law, but if an area of the town that is not getting municipal sanitation pickup, as you and I would call it, and they want to become part of the collection district. It is solely and wholly their choice. And the way they do it, uh, there's a process. You know the process, Tom? You know town law section 190 and the five sections there oh. there's a petition? Petition and a uh, referendum and right. whatever. Okay. Other areas in the town have <laughs> followed the procedure and have become, become part of the uh, the collection district. My experience uh, over the years uh, with, with the Nassau Shores community has been, we've met many, many times and set forth the provisions of law that they need to make them a part of the collection district. And we've given it to them and offered whatever assistance we, uh, they, whatever resources we have, we, we'll set up the referendum for you, we'll do it all where it always broke down, and again, this is my experience, where it always broke down is when you charge the, uh, whoever came forward, in this case, the Civic Association, whoever came forward, when you charge them with the responsibility of going out and getting a petition, every single time they went out for the petition, there was a very, very sharply divided community. Half the people wanted it, half the people <coughs> didn't want it. And I think with the controversy that ensued, I don't, I don't believe we ever got the petition back. So when, when you talk about, because I think that what's at the core of what you're saying is the town somehow plays a role in the decision as to whether or not uh, Nassau Shores could be, and the town is trying to do something to discourage that. We don't, we don't, we don't have that power. The power rests solely in the will of the community. That's, that's all it is. It's as simple as that. And over the years, every time the community has come forward and said we'd like to supervise or a town board or councilman who they met with, we'd like to do this, we said, great, welcome aboard. Here's what you need to do. And we gave them all the documentation, and we told them we will assist them. We will set up a referendum. We'll coordinate it with the Board of Elections. It's on us, so to speak. And it always broke down uh, when it came time because neighbor number one uh, <coughs> wanted it, neighbor number two didn't want it, neighbor number three wanted it, neighbor number four didn't want it. And by the way, just so you know, I, I got to step out for a second, but they even come, came forward with reasons. 
I'm sorry, can you just repeat all this? They, residents would even voice reasons why they were for or against it. For example, someone whose property value is assessed higher than someone else pays a much more substantial fee for the municipal collection. They should. Okay, of course. So, so they didn't want their fee to go up. Others said, hey, you know what? I like the personal touch. You know, no, no, wait, 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 let me finish talking. Wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. <laughs> other, other re that was one reason why some residents wanted it. And of course, a resident whose property value wasn't assessed, whose property wasn't assessed at the high value, uh, they would like the municipal collection to be put okay. That, that's logical. Another reason we heard is um, the residents would say, um, I'd like the personal service. I've got a rapport with you know the, the, the man or woman who picks up my sanitation. Hey, <clears throat> don't tell anybody, but they go to my back door and get it, or you know, whatever the deal is. Uh, and they were happy, and they didn't, they didn't want the, the uh, to go to municipal service. You know, government, what was the other round of regular inspection? Come on, happy with government. But, come on, somebody. <laughs> no, a government, why not a government, government. From the never, government, I'm here to help. Government is, yeah, right. I'm here from the government. Government is help. never, government is never the solution, it's always the problem, that's why I was talking about. And many residents have that attitude as well. So, if, if what you're looking to do is to, hold up guys, what, if what you're looking to do is to bring about the, uh, the entry of Nassau Shores into the collection district, we're here. We'll give you the petitions, we'll provide all the backup, all the cover, we'll pick up the expense, the referendum, we'll do it all for you. But the decision is not the town, by agreement or otherwise, it solely and wholly rests in the will of the community. You know, if I remember correctly, in 1990, the town sued East Norwich to make it part of Oyster Bay Garbage District. I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I have the lawsuit at home. But in any happen. case, well, 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 wait a minute, you just made a statement. Well, my, my recollection is that the Carter sued the town because of certain revenues that were going to the sanitation district. That came from a petition. I, I know the names of the people that actually did it. They had the vote at the East Arch Firehouse, and the residents at the same time, based on assessed valuation of higher or lower, you know, and the fact that they had some of the houses had backyard pickup up there, which the town wouldn't provide, they voted it down and then it never, it never went anywhere past that. Yeah, but see, this is important, Robert, because I corrected you earlier about this agreement business. Bob just gave you an explanation. You, you already went off on an inference that the town sued its knowledge, and therefore there's something rotten in Denmark and something's happening in there. But you see, you, 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 everything is built on, it's like a house of cards. Uh, you John, know, you say that all the time. Well, because it's so, Robert. I, I, the reason I, I don't say it. I mean, how, 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 what am I supposed to feel? No, 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 no. I don't say it because I have nothing else to say. I say it because it's the only thing to say. It's what I'm saying to you is true. All right. Let, let me just move on. You know, the town has. I, do, I can do well. Oh, okay, three. The town has its own code on solid waste. It's Chapter 201. Um, 20118 is permits required. No person in the business of collecting, transporting, and disposing any all of solid waste shall remove any solid waste from the premises of any person upon any <coughs> transport, the same do upon any street. So basically you need a permit. They need a permit. Windsor Bros needs a permit, okay? Actually they need a type one permit. Okay. Then there's an application, it's 2001-21, the content it explains the contents of the application. Can you tell me, do we, do we have an application on file from Windsor Bros? Yes. Okay. Uh, well, we Thank you very much. I'd also like to ask, um, they're required to, to post a deposit in a bond. We have, we have that also? Okay. Uh, can you tell me, the town has the right to inspect Winter Brothers records. Have we ever inspected their records at all? That's a financial. Okay, thanks. I will get that. Now, according to section 201-27, the duty to collect, transport, and deliver recyclables Every permittee, as a condition of the issuance and maintenance of the waste removal permit, shall have agreed to collect, transport, and deliver source-separated recyclable materials generated by any of his customers who have been designated as recycling participants. I don't understand. Winter Brothers doesn't pick up our recyclables. The town of Oyster Bay does. Why wouldn't Winter Brothers be doing it? According to this, according to this code, Winter Brothers should be doing it. It's a contractual obligation between you and Winter Brothers. Town has agreed to pick up the recycling. So um, um, wait, wait a second. So what you're saying is that although the town code 
as 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 part of their permit, okay, they're agreeing that they're going to assume the recyclable right. aspect of the business. You're saying as part of their contract? No, 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 no. As part of their town permit. Right. It's in the town permit. Okay. Okay. This is the town. This is the town permit. This is. This is their requirements. This is what they're agreeing on when they get their town permit. Not not any contract. I can see a copy of that. I, I, yeah, there's no problem. Recycling within solid waste. I, you have to pass it back, like. A, there's recycling within solid waste. Not recycling as a glass bottle. Right. Well, I'll just reread section 201-27. Duty to collect, transport, and deliver recyclables. Every permit T, that's the person that gets the permit, the garbage guy, as a condition of the issuance and maintenance of the waste removal permit, shall have agreed to collect, transport, and deliver source separated recyclable materials generated by any of his customers who have been designated as recyclable participants. Okay? I'll Such recyclable. Robert, Robert, hang on. That, I think that is the really important part that you just read. You just read that last, like, four words. Who have been designated as recycling participants. So they have to have been designated as recycling participants. It's not yes. saying that, have, well, maybe you are, maybe you aren't. I'm not saying that every single I believe. I, I believe that, at this point, every household in the town of Oyster Bay should be designated as a recycling participant. I mean, everybody has yellow cans from Oyster Bay. But this, this section that you're reading... I'm talking about my neighborhood, I'm sorry. No, no, I got it. But this section you're reading deals specifically with those that are being serviced by an outside vendor. So you can't say that it's every single person that deals with an outside vendor is necessarily designated as a recycling participant. I don't know that to be true. Do you know it to be true? For a okay, no, you know, all right, all right. We'll wait till I can confirm that then. But actually, the town would designate them, right? Who also designate them? The town, right? Maybe the contractor that they're providing. I'm not sure. Wait, I'm sorry. Are, are you saying that the contractor would... I'll use myself as an instance. Are you saying that the contractor would decide whether or not I'm a recycling yeah. participant? You know, can I see the, the statute? Sure. I know you only have one copy, but I, I feel like I'm speaking blind a little bit. states that the permits required by this article shall be issued by the town clerk following review and approval of the permit application and upon payment of the application thereof of a fee in accordance with the schedule for below. So each permit issued pur pur pursuant to this article shall be issued as of the date of the granting thereof and shall expire on the first day of the February next succeeding date. Would you agree that these are yearly? Okay. And then can, can you tell me, uh, are you issuing the permits every year? We do issue two, two Winter Brothers. I, 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 mean, I mean, they have... Just find out. Uh, thank you. And the only other thing I want to make you aware of is that the code calls for Winter Brothers to display the decal that you're supposed to be giving them on their truck. And at least in my neighborhood, there's no decals on any of the trucks. Okay, we'll send that to Hey, Rob. Um, just in the interest of time. Uh, yes, I'm finishing up right now. Yeah. Do, but do we have to, is, there, is there relief that you're seeing? Are you looking for something in particular from all of this? Or is this just a recitation of the yes, law? Yes, yes. I'm, 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 we just bottom line it? I'm here be, it, well, we can't just bottom line it. Right. Because I'm entitled to explain it my way. I can't just, I'll do the best I can for you. Okay. The, the Civic Association, from what I understand, wants the town to put any garbage. 
you, you know, you may, we're not going to argue about whether you're entitled or not, but, but Rebecca's question is legitimate. Do we have, what's the purpose here? Where are we going? That's all, that's all I'm asking. I'm trying, to, I'm, trying, I'm trying to find out what's, what's happened, why it happened the way it did, and how we can correct it. I, when we <laughs> offered Jim, Jim is sitting there poised to tell you that, and you tell him, I don't want to hear about it. I didn't say I don't want to hear about well, it. Then let's, let's hear it. I mean, do you, do you want me to just leave without but telling I, everything well, about that, all my concerns? I, I, I want to give you an answer. You just said you want to know how it happened, how we got here. Jim is prepared to tell you that. So why don't we listen to Jim? He, he said, I want to take the history of that, 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 I'm sorry, John. Listen, let, let me just finish without, all, without you being on your own. Pick up the pace. All right, I'll make it real quick, all right? Listen, this is, this is in, in a nutshell, okay? This is what I'm getting, okay? From what I was told, the Civic Association came to the town in 2014. Who told said, you? Who told you? The president of the Civic Association. The current president? Yes. Was he a part of the 14 meeting? The vice president was. Okay. okay. The vice president? John Sakusko. He was the president at the time. He was president at the time. He's vice president now. Okay. Okay. Actually, I can read you his emails if you like. If you want to know what he said. No, not really. I want you to. Okay. Read. So, so here's my. Well, you're questioning who they are. If you want to know exactly what they said, no, I can read you exactly what they said. said so I it's been conveyed to me that they came to the town in 2014, and they said, "Listen, we want the town to do our garbage." Okay. And and they were they were given a list by the town, and the town said, "Listen, this is a list that we compiled. This is how much it's going to cost every taxpayer if they switch to our garbage." Okay. And like I mentioned earlier, but when they asked for that information. Of course they did, right? Which, which, which I'm saying they asked for it, and it, it brought, it brought, it renewed the situation in your, in the town's eyes. Okay, so, so no matter what went on here, I just don't understand why the town wouldn't be pursuing taking over the private sanitation. We're, we're, but, but we're residents, and and the the let me, let me just explain to you the feedback that I'm getting from the civic association is that the town is making it difficult for them instead of, instead of embracing it, okay? My last attempts to investigate the feasibility of the town taking off as a garbage collection was in April, May, right? I find it hard to believe that the town would see three quarters of a million dollars in possible revenue from residents of the town of Oyster Bay, okay? And say, well, you know what? It was, it was an agreement made back in 57, so we can't do anything about it. So, so I just want to bring one last item to your attention, okay? And then, and then I'll answer your question. Because you are representing a civic association that would like to be brought back into town sanitation. Is that it? I'm just, I want to be clear. Is that what you're at? I just want to make sure I understand. To the best of my knowledge, yes. Okay, so why not just ask, ask that? If I can, why don't we find out the mechanism to do that and start the okay. whole motion if that's the case you want to do that? That's what, that's the, yeah, that's what, that's what I like to do. Okay. All right. Yeah, all right. Yeah, all right. That's, that's the reason they were. The reason they were provided with that information is so that they had sufficient information to present the petition. Until the town board uh, is submitted a petition on behalf of an area, it doesn't have to be by the Civic Association, by, an area, by a definite area uh, with definite boundaries, then the town board can pass upon it. And if the town board finds it to be in the best interest, it's then subject to a, a referendum is it, by, Tommy, the, by the Is the Civic right. Association so aware giving, of what they need to do and want to get back on? Giving the, giving the Civic Association the information was the information necessary for them to submit a petition. Okay. So no petition has ever been right. submitted to the town board. Uh, uh, you know, uh, it seems like, it seems like if, if it's, they want to get back on, there are procedures that have to be followed. But it doesn't have to be the Civic Association. Right. It could be a group of certain residents. Right, absolutely. Right. Yeah. If you get a meeting together... I mean, I want to come, come back on right now. Someone come. You, you know, you know I don't, I, I'd like to come back on. And I understand that. It, it's, uh, oh. I hope you can just appreciate that. Oh, I got you. Can I, may I, Councilman Tintos? I got you. It's New York State Town Law, like Mr. Sabella mentioned before. 190. It's in, it's in the law. Right. It's very clear. We all have to follow it. The civic does their well, what do we have? The residents in that area do their part, and then it comes to us, and then we do our part. Okay, and that's how it works. Oh, listen, we'll address it that way. It just seems silly to me that that the residents want to come to the town, and, and they they don't have. They're not a strong association. There are not a lot of people involved. They have a very difficult time getting anything done. And it just it just doesn't I just want this is what I wanted to bring to your attention, okay? It just doesn't make sense to me that that the town could recoup all this money in revenue, but but it's not happening because of, of the deficiencies of the operating operation of the Civic Association. That's what's going on. They they, they can't get it done. Okay. 
So I, I don't know if I, I don't know about the, and I think what really happened is the community is very divided over the issue. I think that's a, I think the Civic Association has tried very hard to get the job done, but when they actually go out into the streets, <coughs> they find that it's a, it's a and it's a, I, I, figuratively speaking, they very sharp, violent disagreements about this issue. I, don't, I think the Civic Association is not to be blamed. Oh. They come forward and they ask, what do we do? We tell them, we equip them with all the information, we help them, petitions, and like I said before, setting up referendums and stuff like that. But then when they run to the streets, I think they find that the community is very, 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 very seriously split over this issue. I just wanted to just give you some information. One last thing before I go. I just wanted to say that, you know, you're right about what you're saying about the, the, the division possibly in the community. And although we were able to get the list of what it would cost if the town did it, we're currently trying to get a list from Winter Brothers of what everybody pays because because nobody in the Civic Association has been able to look apple to apples. I mean, nobody, you know what I mean? So, great. I want to bring attention that this is out there. Personally, as a resident of Oyster Bay, I don't think anybody should be paying for private service. I think the town should be doing all of it. I just see I just see revenue that we're losing. Are there steps to go through it that you pointed out to me? Yes, there are. So we'll continue to work together on it, and hopefully we can get into the town. Okay, okay that's all right, thank you. Yeah, and Rep, Bob and I were just talking. The revenue is right. The revenue is not for free. You still have to go in there, collect the garbage, hire workers, put a truck on, dispose of the garbage, pay the tipping fee. So we don't even know right now if it would be a profit or loss center for the town, but it's a service and the town has always been in favor of going through it if the residents go through the proper, which sounds like you said a lot of red tape. It is, but the town has cooperated and, and all the residents have to do is file this petition and go from there. You know, I'm glad you brought that up because this came to mind also. Like I was paying 35 bucks a month and could you imagine if everybody could pay 35 bucks a month, like, like all the overhead you just you just mentioned, why not switch the whole town to private and just do away with the whole sanitation thing? <laughs> I mean, that, 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 you know, come on. Thank you. Does it work? Okay. It's not going to be a flat fee. All right, thank you. Bob Fryer. Bob Fryer.